Well, it's going to happen if you drive them. Not the greatest day. But let's see what we can do. Well, when I came home from the flatbed, I noticed that the outer tie rod end was hanging loose. And yeah, I think it goes a little bit deeper than that. We'll get this wheel off and we'll find out. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it in the first photo, but definitely bent the wheel up here. That's okay. I've had them repaired before. I think they can fix this one. We'll see. Uh, got a place just north of Indy that I haven't tried out yet. That uh, we'll see how they do. They seem to get good reviews. Cheaper than buying a new one. It's scratched up, but hey, so is the rest of the car on them. Definitely stinks. The rim the rims were the best looking thing, but we'll get her back 85%. I say. Now on to this. Um, with the wheel off, definitely see we got a one of them Bluetooth tie rod ends right there. Um, and I did notice, I didn't mention, but when they were sitting on the ground, you could see the wheel was pushed back, way back in the opening to the door jam side. And I knew that was uh, not a good sign. And my fear was, and it, it still could be, that this right here, this cross member that bolts out, was bent. But I don't think it is. I think what we have here is a bent lower control arm. You see how the end link here is pushed pushed back you know that's almost almost vertical when it's set and you can't see it with the brakes on too much you see the the knuckle is kind of going from top to bottom at an angle you definitely see it up at the at the top ball joint there and if anything instead of going like this it should be going like that a little bit um a little bit of caster on this and we're really straight up and down but uh whoa check that out how about that so yeah some stuff's moved um too bad those the shocks for those dampers were pretty pretty new um so maybe i can just get a get another control arm lower control arm and keep rolling uh with the added benefit of kind of re-bending this uh, rear mount, rear pivot for the control arm. It's it's all pushed out of shape. Uh, it's, it's not destroyed, but it's moved somewhat. Yeah, you can see kind of it pivoted, just kind of slid it out. It is really hard to see. But uh, that bolt right there behind the, right in here, it just kind of cranked it out. And check out the little coil spring here. It's all off axis. So, I mean, well, we know this is bad. So, I mean, start there and keep going. I, I think so I can move the car because I don't want to keep it in here in the little garage I think I may go ahead and just fix the uh, this uh, outer tie rod in it, as cool as it looks I would I would kind of like to have two wheels to steer so I may go ahead and do that and then we can move it and I'll start shopping for uh, replacement parts and we'll take this all back apart and then the bigger ugly issue uh, yeah, 
That's a bummer. I mean, I, I guess it could be worse. Nobody got hurt and uh, didn't tear up this uh, nose piece. I mean, other than scratching it up a little bit, uh, it's it's repairable. But the, the fender, hmm, yeah, missing, missing too much to go on there. Save my Indy IMS emblem, though, so I'm glad about that. Did knock a big chunk out of the rocker panel cover, so we'll address that at a later date. But uh, like I told you in the first video, if you go back and watch part one, um, yeah, I could just take this off and drive it around. I mean, it would look totally, totally redneck, but that's, hey, that's what I am. But, uh, and that's a little too far out of the dare to be different zone. So we may try to put a fender on it before we put it back on the road. But, um, yeah, finding one, I got the feelers out, but it's not like it used to be. That's for sure. They're, uh. Everybody wants uh, a fortune for stuff these days, but we'll get one. Whether whether I have to pay a premium for it or not, you know, got to get it. I'm home. This came home about 1 a.m. on a flatbed, and I couldn't see it real well. I got I got a decent light out here, but I was kind of focused on the front. Looks like looks like he knocked knocked the rear piece loose here too. So. Yeah, some broken plastic there, so more, more pieces and parts, but we'll get there. Um, I think it knocked the rear wing loose too. This is looser than it was, so pull that apart and re-cement the studs back into it, because uh, I don't want to lose that either. Those always get taken off cars in the junkyard just just because it's a wing. Somebody. Puts it on the on the hatch of their Geo Metro or something. Um, adds adds ten horsepower, right? Hey, mail came today. Let's see what we got. What could it be? Big lot of paper. Oh no. That looks like a uh, 84 Fiero lower control arm. Right side. This is a junkyard part uh, bought online uh, or auto dismantler recycler for you fancy folk. Uh, I'm not. I'm not complaining one bit. Uh, I'm glad to find one. Uh, what I what I research is that. Uh, 84 is different. Now, I knew 88 was different, but evidently 85 to 87 are supposed to be dimensionally the same, but they're they're not constructed the same way. I don't think they're I don't think they're boxed in this area. Well, it's not really boxed, but I think they're more of an open like hat channel kind of piece here from the pictures that I saw. I don't know. I don't have one, but it kind of limited um, limited my um, search there because I, I had to have an 84 since. What I read is that you should, if you're going to change to the, the later design, that you should replace them in pairs. I, I don't know. I didn't want to take the risk. I, If it's dimensionally the same, I'm kind of skeptical about that. But, hey, we got an 84, so that's all good. I um, These bushings are, are you know, wasted, but... I'm, I'm debating. I can't, I can't have the car off the road for that long. I'm debating letting them go for the time being because it's it's still winter here and I uh, I would rather do this when it's you know 60 plus than 20 or I think it's 15 right now but um, 
something. So I may I may do that. I'm I'm thinking about it. The the thing that kind of really sucks is they tore the grease boot up on here, which you know it, they're just pulling it apart. I'm I'm not upset. It'd just been it'd been nice if I wouldn't have to have to deal with this because that is something that I'm gonna address. Um, I would kind of hate putting dirty rusty stuff back on a car. Really kind of want to paint it, but then it's like well. You do it right, and it's really too cold to paint, so I may just throw some, hit it with a wire wire brush, and uh, put some rust converter on it just to just to keep it from getting any worse. Uh, I don't know. Um, I hate I hate to paint over this guy's initials here that he put on there. I don't know. I wonder what his name was. Like you know, probably Robert or something, but um, Roberto Fettuccini maybe. Um, oh or, well, no, that's right hand front, I guess. So, uh, I guess I can paint over that. All right, let's tear back into this thing. I put this new tie rod end on just so we can move it, and we're going to end up taking it back off. So, uh, never reuse a cotter pin. I'm sure you guys know that, but I've seen it done. I've seen a, a nail stuck through and bent over or nothing. Um, yeah. That's that's super sketchy, and you'll find out the hard way why that's a bad idea. Hopefully not. Uh, the other thing, uh, I, you see this zip tie on here. Um, not totally necessary, but I put that on there in case I, I screwed up and moved this. I did count the turns to get it back on close enough to where the toe was similar to what it was when we took it apart. But... Hey, you know, it, it didn't hurt to do that. Uh, the other little thing that I I did here, and th this might seem kind of silly, but um, on this anti-sway bar, um, the links that go through here, um, you know, if, if you don't have them tight in the same amount on each side, you are introducing a bias into it because uh, it, it is a big torsion bar. It's a spring, you know, to keep keep the body from rolling against the uh, road forces, coring forces. So what I did to make sure I got it the same way when I put it back on as the other side, because I, I could do what I did before and, and measure each side and get them even, but I don't want to take, I don't want to take that wheel off on the other side if I don't have to. Um, I cut a piece of tubing here that is the same length as the exposed threads. And I'll just hang on to that to when we put it back together because I I probably, I don't know. I don't know if I'll replace this end link or not. It, it's kind of wasted. But regardless of what I do, um, at least I get it back. Lots of variables in there, but I just don't want to, I just don't want to guess. I want to get it as close to where it was before I did anything um, when I put it back together. Okay, got the cotter pin and the nut off of here. I wanted to stop and talk about how to take this apart. Um, if you don't care, I guess you can let it rip and pound on the top of it. I've seen people put the, the castle nut on upside down and bang on that and, you know, whatever. Um, you know, you're, you're kind of taking a risk of mushroom in the head of that and it gets stuck. So uh, I would not recommend that. Um, you know, most people grab one of these, you know, tie rod separator tool, pick a pickle fork, whatever. Um, you know, they make these hook onto a air hammer, all, all different types of things. They're, they're pretty slick. You know, they fit in there between the, uh, the grease boot and the top tapered part of what we're attaching to kind of wedges it puts a drives a wedge in between there and pushes it apart I, they're okay i mean if you're gonna replace it anyway i guess you know let her rip because they almost always tear the grease boot up but i found out something i thought well i'm gonna throw this away i end up needing it so i kind of i kind of try to stop destroying stuff if i can when i'm doing it Another way, a really good way, 
if you can get in there is to take two hammers and you're smacking on either side of that that boss and it breaks the taper just the, the shock of those two coming together you're not hitting the hammers together you're hitting both sides of the part that the uh, tapered piece is, is mounted into uh, it's awesome if you've got room to swing a hammer and I don't know maybe on a, a bigger vehicle or something you might um, but it but it certainly works um, what I have grown to love here is this goofy thing here um, basically just a little press when you tighten this up it pushes this finger down on the front open it up here a little bit so you can see and I'll shine the light back on it but it's this this is pretty pretty easy on that grease boot it just kind of snaps in there really nice um, put some tension on it so it won't fall out when we let go and then we'll put the light back on so you can see what it is but it's basically just when you're cranking this bolt up pushing this arm down and pushing on the top of that pops it right out it's it's pretty slick I mean I I know I hate just buying tools and tools, you know, for something I'm never going to use. But I use this all the time. That's in my suspension and steering drawer. And this is just some, you know, Chineseium copy of probably something that was made in the 40s or 50s that you can't get anymore. But it works pretty good. And uh, so far, I haven't broke it. I mean, knock on wood. But uh, I'd recommend that. They're, they're pretty handy. And even even something I don't care about, I, I try to use it because it just it just makes it easier to uh, put it back together if you have to have to reverse direction quickly. Ta-da! Back to Bluetooth steering again, so we can get at the other stuff. We'll take this apart, I'll swing it back around the other way when that's loose. And we'll take the shock apart back here. Not take it apart, but we'll undo it from the control arm back in there. Maybe. Okay, as you can see, that wasn't going to come out um, because it's bent so far back. Um, can't get the bolt straight out. And it was rusted to the sleeve. And I made the decision, you know, tear it up. I'm going to replace it now because I can't reuse it. So that's where all the hammer time action came into play there. But still isn't going to come out. But it's off. The bushings are off and the threads are off. So it should allow the lower control arm to come down. We may have to get the pry bars in there and pop it out out of place. Um, while I was at it, I went ahead and took the, the cotter pin out of the lower ball joint. Didn't break this loose be yet. Um, you definitely don't want to do that because the spring, even even though the suspension is relaxed, it's still under tension. And man, that'll kick out and you know hit something you don't want it to hit. You know, and uh, then you're explaining. To your insurance company uh, why you why you were doing this uh, or worse so yeah don't mess with anything any kind of potential in energy like a compressed spring 
uh, pressurized cylinder, those kinds of things, uh, they don't they don't give you any warning. So if anybody calls you a chicken for not wanting to do this and jump out of the way, well, they don't really uh, they don't really have your best interests at heart. So we'll do that in a second here. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch gear over to the back side here that you can't see where the camera's at and disconnect that shock. So we're ready to put the jack underneath here, hold the spring up and take the lower ball joint loose. Okay, that's how the shock mounts to the lower control arm. We'll take that loose next. Okay, we got the shock loose back there, but I wanted to mention, um, we're following the textbook approved GM manual procedure for this. But when you got a car that's been damaged like this, anything goes. And when I pulled that shock bolt out of there, it that control arm shot down like a rocket. Now, whose fault is that? Well, it's mine because I should have seen that the the coil was was compressed somewhat because it was so twisted up. We should have had a jack underneath here. But you know, luckily I'm a couple feet away and it just went kaboom and uh, got a little little exciting there for a second. But obviously, everything we're doing here, this is not an official training video in no way, shape, or form. You're, this is entertainment. You're following this at your own risk. But I don't want you to take any risk. Be smart. Be safe. Um, even when you're trying, you can still get hurt. Uh, there's too many cases of that. So... Um, you can see that ratchet strap going around that spring there. Um, it ain't going anywhere right now, but I'm going to have it ready. A lot of people don't do that. I don't do it a lot of times, but you just never know what's going to happen. It it doesn't take that much longer to put that extra bit of safety in there, and it doesn't cost anything. And um, even if you're even if you're tough. Um, Hospital bills are expensive, so be smart. Now, this was a little spooky. That lower ball joint nut that we took the cotter pin out on earlier, it's, it was loose. No, I can't turn it now, but um, yeah, I, I yeah, there you go. Look at that. It was not loose when I installed that. Uh, I've taken this apart many times, so... That is how much force uh, has been applied to this in the crash. So it's got to go somewhere. And if it doesn't bend something up, it's stored as energy in some other assembly. And when you start loosening things up, it's coming out. And it may come out to get you. So just be smart. Hey kids, we got stuff started. This is getting kind of long. You saw me get the spring out with a little bit of difficulty, but we got a lot more to do. So there's going to be more parts to this, obviously. I'm going to keep working on it. They'll be releasing soon. Check this one out. If you haven't checked the first episode out, go back and see what this thing's all about. Keep tuning in. Like, subscribe, share, do that homework. Definitely subscribe. It helps me out. It helps you out too. It's all good. Everybody wins. So we'll see you soon. Dare to be different. Later.